So you mentioned the spiritual aspect of things. You think all the animals, the trees, and everything has a spirit to it? Absolutely. For me, that's a no-brainer. It's an obvious thing. Um, and I think 20th century man is catching up to the understanding of so many indigenous peoples across the world in their relationship with animals. The, the Egyptians knew it with cats. I think 20th century man knows it where dogs can sniff out bombs and be trained. They can find cancer. They can find the smallest ounce of cancer in the human body. They've been known to save their human companions in times of peril. Uh, of all the animals on this planet, including us, they can sense an earthquake before it happens. There's one cat that was kind of in the news a while ago that knew when someone was going to die and it was at a hospital and it would jump on the bed of the person who was going to pass each and every time and it was accurate each and every time. Mm -hmm. That animal knew when that person was going to pass and it was almost as if that animal gave comfort or an understanding and gave that person an understanding once people connected that animal to that understanding of passing. Mm -hmm. And I believe that animals have that transcendent relationship. I think the universe provided a transcendent relationship um, with animals and human beings because it helps us and reminds us and validates our level of respect for ourselves and respect for other living things. We can't live without it. We're all codependent. When you destroy the planet, man destroys himself. When man destroys himself, man will destroy the planet. And we, we're seeing that in the 21st century. We've seen it in the 20th century, you know, with the Industrial Revolution in the 19th century, moving on up to the 21st century. And, um, you know, it's a slow demise. But it is also very much in line with our relationship. And now people are catching up to their spiritual selves when they have that understanding of peril that they're going to lose their own lives, that the environment is directly connected to us and that there is an umbilical cord of connection. And people see that now. They're very, very cognizant of that now. And I think more people are aware of their spirituality than ever before. Deborah believes that human beings can heal the planet if we have a closer connectivity with our higher power or belief system and the realization that we are a part of the divine. Yes, it seems like the destruction that's happening on the earth is happening so quickly now that, you know, before it was slow, but now we've got so many people doing so many things that it's difficult to think that the earth would survive much longer if we really change. Absolutely. And I think man started destroying himself. Mm -hmm. And because he lost his respect for self, or because human beings begin to lose their respect for self, and that marriage, that beautiful marriage of spirit, they began to do things void of spirit that had consequences. Mm -hmm. That had specific consequences to themselves, and that had specific consequences to the planet and their relationships. And I think the three or the two greatest relationships you can ever have that will help you heal the planet is having a relationship with your higher power or your belief system. Because then you're beholden to that. You have consequences. It's not a matter of, well, I can get away with this. You know, no one's going to catch me, mm -hmm. so it's no big deal. You then have repercussions spiritually because of your belief system. That's number one. And number two, you then have a greater relationship with yourself because you see that divine connection. You are a part of the divine. And because you are part of the divine, there are certain things that you won't do. Certain things that you won't allow. Certain things that you say, I am too good for that. I don't want to do that. That doesn't serve me. That doesn't serve a purpose in my relationship with my higher power. That doesn't serve a relationship with the things I'm doing and where I'm growing into. And what I'm growing into. And you're asking to grow also with those relationships. I think people stop asking to grow because they get defined by their job, their occupation, their career. They get defined by who they're married to. They get defined by the house they live in, the car they drive, the people they socialize with. They get defined by um, the salary they make, the clothes that they wear, the jewelry. They get defined by all the materialistic possessions. And because of that, they stop being defined by the consequences of what their relationship is with their self and with their higher power. And because those two have been fractured, they're going to have fractured relationships with everything else. Deborah believes that there is a connection in cultures and the spirituality of all religions. So we should all stay in touch with the spirit more that's inside of ourselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think what you can do is, I think it's, 
it's very wonderful to embrace cultures and the spirituality of each religion because you're going to find that there are connections mm -hmm. instead of being disconnected by religion you can be connected by the spirituality of each and that's why I consider myself and we talked about spirituality uh, an extremely spiritual person because I take the spiritual philosophy of all religions without embracing the religions themselves. I'll embrace all of the spiritual philosophy of them without embracing the religion itself. She also shares with us her work with the Young Storytellers program and the positive impact it has on school children all across the United States. The Storytellers program. Could you tell us about that? Does that have a spiritual aspect to that? I don't think there's anything that doesn't. I yeah. think when you're connecting to a human being and watching a young soul grow and become a better person through their creativity, you can't help but realize that the spiritual connection is there. We all have a spiritual umbilical cord. We're all tied to the mother, which is the earth. We're all tied to, um, and in my belief system, the father, which is the higher power. And I believe those are the greatest parents they'll ever have. And because of that, we are all connected as brothers and sisters. We're here to represent each other. We are mirror images of each other. And hurting you hurts me. Um, and fracturing my relationship with my higher power and the earth destroys my brothers and sisters because I'm taking away something that you need. I'm taking away your clean water. I'm taking away those things. Hurting you with my words does the same thing. I'm fracturing you. So to be able to be a part of a program like the Young Storytellers program where you're watching these young souls get the opportunity to say, I can write, I can create. It's like watching them breathe another type of a breath. How exactly did Young Storytellers program come into being? It was created about eight years ago by a gentleman who uh, came to this country, a young man who came to this country where English was a second language. He didn't thrive in school and because of that he felt stupid. He wasn't given the creative tools to feel like he could be a part of American society and really fit in immediately. And um, when he became an adult and kind of went back, he had this resurgence of why students in America don't thrive as well. They realized that school programs are being cut, creative programs are being cut, music, drama, all the things that are necessary to thrive for the spirit and art helps us thrive in the spirit are being cut. And I think school boards across the country believe that as long as you're getting an education, as far as the fundamentals are concerned, that's all you really need. But it's not true because, again, with spirit, it has to have something to make it thrive. The human physical body can't thrive without the spirit thriving. And um, kids weren't doing as well. Or, or they weren't staying in school. There was ADD, attention deficit disorder. They weren't paying attention as much. They weren't thriving. They were surviving and existing in school programs, but they weren't thriving when these programs were taken away. The Young Storytellers program was initially for children who are learning English as a second language. But soon, it blossoms into something so positive that all school children benefit from it. So this young man decided to do a program that was going to help children who had a second language, English as their second language, thrive and feel like they were equal peers on an emotional level, on a psychological level. And he realized that this program is helping all children thrive. Once he took it to elementary schools, children became involved because it really allowed their self-esteem to be put on the front burner instead of the back burner. They felt like they could tell their stories. They felt like they could create and have a positive, loving, nurturing environment within the school environment to create where they're given permission to really thrive. And he realized that this goes beyond children who have English as a second language. This is, affects all children who have low self-esteem. This affects all children who believe that they can't create. And then they started taking it into school districts in urban areas throughout Los Angeles. And watch these children absolutely thrive and feel like they could write, that they were contributing members to themselves. You know, mm -hmm. instead of it being you're learning an education so you can be a contributing member to society, so you can get a job and have an education. It was like, wait a minute, we're forgetting the spiritual foundation, which is let them be contributing members to themselves mm -hmm. so that they can continue to be contributing members to other individuals. And that's how a society creates contributing members to a society.
we have to speak for the animals. They can't speak for themselves. And I, I, I beg to differ. They scream. They cry when they're taken away. They've been tortured by us. And we're the responsible ones for that. Animals give nothing but pure love, pure joy. It's because of us. And we have the responsibility on this planet as higher beings to make sure that we do something that says a lot about our society.